Hey everybody! I know it's been a really long time since I've made a video and a lot of these sources that I'm going to use are from 2013 and that's because while I was laid up with work finding a job um, moving from one job to another and doing coursework. I also snipped all these stories for you. Starting all the way back in November, on November 13th, there are articles about the Dr. Seuss and Maurice Sandex uh, Where the Wild Things Are at the New Britain Museum of American Art. Um, yeah, I've got copies of the articles to show you, but I didn't even know in reading them that Where the Wild Things Are is 50 years old and that it was banned in a lot of libraries and things, schools, probably because Max disobeys his mother and doesn't, I think, clean his room. So in seeing that a children's book can be banned, it makes more sense that as they grow older, other books become banned. In reading the articles about the New Britain Museum of American Art, I took my 10-year-old to go and see. Now, my 10-year-old has impulsivity or ADHD. I think it's called um, ADHD with attention. That's the new phrase, and it's very evident in him. As soon as we brought him in, he was ex excited, enthralled, but keeping his attention on various items throughout the museum was a bit of a challenge. So what my boyfriend and I did with our 10 year old was point out that each piece of artwork has a maker or an artist and a made year the material that it's made out of and a purpose for making it and you can read all about this and determine your own idea of why the author made it or the artist made it by reading the little blurbs on the left right below it above it wherever and seeing the way that they signed the pieces is really interesting so in making this really short video, I wanted to know what are your suggestions for getting a student with attention deficit to pay attention to artwork? And yes, I've already thought of the aftermath of can they make a short story about it? Can they make their own model or their own version of it in whatever medium you have available or whatever medium they choose if you give them a couple of options? Lastly, I really liked how at the museum there were a couple of activities that the children could do about Marie Sandek, where the wild things are. When you go outside of the exhibit, and you go down the hall towards the library, there is an art room or art studio is what it's called and a few different things that the kids can do. This right here is in this strange new land, Max is proclaimed king of all the wild things. Imagine you too are king. What does your crown look like? And I think this would be a much better thing if it wasn't just a two-dimensional image, but rather you could put string on it or make it somehow into a three-dimensional crown and they can wear it. Maybe even get a um, Burger King crown and cover it with paint, let it dry, and let them 
color it. So that's one idea. Next is this right here. What kind of wild thing would you be? Imagine you lived with Max in the forest among the wild things. Draw a picture to show what kind of wild thing you are. And I like this because it's a drawing, but also you can put descriptive words in there and actually write on a separate piece of paper and create your own story of what kind of animal or monster, wild thing you are. On the back of this page, it has a wild thing maze. Can you help Max find his way to where the wild things are? Join Max on the tumbling ocean and mark his path in the maze. You can see, oops, the boat. You can see the monster. And then you can see the boat and the wild thing. So those are kind of cute. And I think there was only one of those left. And then a word sort. Some of the words include max, forest, sailboat, wild things. I'm not going to go through all of them, but that was really cute. And last but not least, I think this is my most fun idea. You can make your own monster. And I'm going to scan these into my computer. And what the children do is they color on it. And wherever you see those little X's, you take push pins, push them in, and open them up so that they have little legs that work. And you can see these things in craft stores and a lot in schools. So it's a really great thing, and these can really foster storytelling abilities, puppeteering, and um, make-believe and a bunch of other great things, including my favorite, writing. So think about all of that and have fun with your youngsters.